Harris is deploying former President Obama in the crucial state of Pennsylvania, a sign of how vital turnout will be there. The campaign is in its highest gear, making this move by unleashing Obama, as the New York Times put it. Obama has not campaigned for Harris out in a speech or in the states since the convention. And this is one of those signs that we will see over these coming days, that we are clearly now in it. We are in the home stretch, and Obama is building on a long political relationship here. A dear, dear friend of mine, so I want everybody to do right by her, San Francisco District Attorney Kamala Harris. I remember being in Iowa, Des Moines. It was really, really cold. <laughs> Christmas through New Year's, and everybody was there. You know, us Californians, we didn't really know what to wear. So we just went here. The president just and we just celebrated his first 100 days, and we couldn't be more proud because it was the most work that any elected president of the United States in recent memory has actually accomplished. Not just talk, but accomplished. From his first days, he did what he promised us he would do, and he has only just begun. And my friend Kamala Harris, he's chosen an ideal partner who is more than prepared for the job. We have now, in particular, a nominee uh, in Barack Obama, who is someone who is personally dedicated as a constitutional lawyer to thinking about and caring about making sure that we respect and not butcher the Constitution of the United States. Michelle and I couldn't be prouder to endorse you and to do everything we can to get you through this election and, and into the Oval Office. That's the relationship, the what. Then tonight, I can tell you, is the where. This Obama rally tonight reflects how Harris's aides know this race is very tight. They are putting Obama in a state that is usually do or die for Democrats trying to build a winning electoral college coalition. They have Obama guru David Pluff in a senior role helping run this campaign. He was just discussing some of these plans with our colleague Nicole late today. And this Harris Strait strategy does look shrewd. Now, one might think, well, of course, Obama's aides, veterans, Harris aides, want to put President Obama in a key state. But these are actually strategic calls. Obama cannot be everywhere. And consider that, by contrast, in 2016, the Clinton campaign asked Obama to go to Florida in October, about the same part of the campaign that we're in now. Florida is a state that Clinton later lost by two points. They also sent him that month to North Carolina, which they lost by four. You know where the Clinton campaign never sent Barack Obama? Pennsylvania. And Clinton aides seemed surprised to then lose that key state by about half a point, or a slim 44,000 votes, we checked, which sealed her fate of losing to Trump. So today, Harris is statistically tied with Trump in Pennsylvania and the other key states. Obama's first rally, a singular event for Democrats as they learn the lessons of past cycles, winning and losing, and want to use him and this singular event in the key place of Pennsylvania. Remember, Trump just deployed Elon Musk in that same state, an effort to add a kind of right-wing celebrity excitement to his local ground game. Dems clearly view Obama's return as a motivator, and they are not just kind of tilting at windmills, dreaming about flipping North Carolina. They are putting him in PA tonight because it matters so much. And he has that signature style. Don't boo, vote. I love you back. <laughs> I love you back. Together, we will begin the next great chapter in the American story with three words that will ring from coast to coast, from sea to shining sea. Yes, we can. When you're running for the presidency, uh, then you've got to expect it. Uh, and, you know, you've just got to kind of let it. I'm so in love with you. We are just inside an hour from Obama. We'll find out if we get that Obama or a different Obama or a whole medley of why he is uh, such an effective campaigner. 
So Harris sending Obama to Pennsylvania is one indicator of the campaign strategy. And if they do win with the blue wall in under a month from now, this will look shrewd and it will look more careful than some of those 2016 Democratic moves I mentioned. There are also other indicators of this tight race. Harris has clearly improved on Joe Biden's standing from the summer. When she stepped up, the overall ticket has improved. That's a fact that we can measure. But now, even her own Democratic Party leaders also see something of a pullback or a tightening on that improvement. They're eyeing how this blue wall that I'm mentioning, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, are getting tougher. Axios reporting on how there is a view that Harris almost seems stuck or sliding a bit. Now, some of that may just sound like the vibes. And D.C. has so much of that that people call it sometimes the bedwetting or the pundits going on and on. But these sources, I want to tell you, include people who deal in numbers and badly want Kamala Harris to beat Trump. So if you're listening to this and thinking it sounds like hype or vibes or is it unhelpful to Harris or not, we're just talking in the, in the Axios reporting and some of these other indications about people who are pro-Harris, look at numbers, and see this tightening, are worried about how tight the race is, that it is a losable race for her right now. In that same vein, we have longtime Democratic strategist James Carville and what he told us on The Beat just last night. The only thing I feel is the elections come in November 5th. And I'm scared <laughs> to death. They need to be sharp. They need to be aggressive. They need to stop answering questions and start asking questions. They're doing all this and sitting down with 60 Minutes and sitting down with Colbert and sitting down with this. No matter what, if I come on your show, you're going to ask me the question. That's true. If I have a press conference, I get to ask the question. You'd like to see her do more press conferences? I'd like for her to put more things in play. Put things in play. Be aggressive. That's his view on how to make up some ground. And that includes dealing with voters that Democrats usually need to win in order to take the Electoral College, to have that coalition I mentioned. The New York Times also reporting that black men have been a weak point for Ms. Harris. They're thinking that the vocal support of Obama, the first black president, could help her there in Pennsylvania. Ms. Harris's support among black voters is lower than what Biden received when he won the state in 2020. Again, these are just numbers, measurable. Everything can change. Polls are a rough indicator. I've told you that. But if you're covering a race, we're going to cover the evidence as it comes in. We covered the issues with President Biden. We covered his debate. We're covering what's happening out there with Harris, which is context for the picture you see on your screen in Pittsburgh, where Obama's going to come out there tonight. And you're going to be able to watch it if you keep it on MSNBC. And we're going to find out, will he directly address some of those very points, the constituencies, bringing what are sometimes seen as his voters or his winning coalition towards Harris, addressing what might be the questions about her. She's had a shorter runway than any modern candidate, as we all know from the switch. Meanwhile, Obama, when it comes to warning against the return of Donald Trump, Obama is a leader, a voice, who has had many, many people feel that he knows how to handle any kind of matchup with Trump. No one is prouder to put this birth certificate matter to rest than the Donald. And that's because he can finally get back to focusing on the issues that matter. Like, did we fake the moon landing? Where are Biggie and Tupac? <laughs> he hasn't shown any interest in doing the work treating the presidency like a reality show that he can use to get attention. There's the childish nicknames, the crazy conspiracy theories, this weird obsession with crowd sizes. The obsession with sizes. Where are Biggie and Tupac? Uh, this is how Barack Obama does it. He's also hitting on something factual. Trump's rallies have their own problems. I just told you some of the numbers that the Harris campaign is thinking about. Well, you use rallies to build enthusiasm and have people filling the crowds to go back out and carry the message for you in wherever region you go. Look at these empty chairs. Look at these empty rallies for Donald Trump. Ain't a lot of people at some of these things who are going to go spread the message. And that's just the ground game. That's the field strategy, as it's called in campaigns. Then you have the personage of Donald Trump. 
the attitude, the insecurity. We're talking about character sometimes when we talk about leaders, and it clearly bothers him, which is why he then lies about his own crowds. And who else can fill up? Only, only MAGA. But who up fill, whoever fills big places like this at 3 o'clock in the afternoon? We do a lot of these beautiful rallies, and it's so great. We never have an empty seat. Never have. Fact check. False. They do have empty seats, and a lot of them. So I'm showing you both the excitement and the strategy behind where Obama's headed tonight, trying to hold and build on a blue coalition. I'm also showing you the problems that Trump has, which are legion and we've covered. Then there's one more piece here right now, which is the Harris campaign trying to also go on offense in some red turf. And they have tried to attract some wobbly Republicans who might be turned off by Trump. I can tell you, also in the crucial state of Pennsylvania, that's where Obama's speaking tonight, Last night, Liz Cheney, who was out on the trail with Harris, did something special, something different with people you may recognize. And this is something that we rarely ever see in national campaigns. Liz Cheney, who was a Republican leader in the House, backing Trump as recently as the last presidential cycle, 2020, campaigning for Harris and bringing along Trump aides, some of whom worked with him through his loss in November of 2020, all the way up through January 6th, and then said, Enough is enough. Here's some of what they relayed to those Pennsylvania voters. A broad coalition, a coalition unlike any that we have seen, certainly in modern American history, has come together to defeat Donald Trump. The man that you saw on January 6th is the man that he is every day. Don't, don't let him fool you. I've been telling people that is my sole reasoning is that I I, it's the Constitution. I, Donald Trump has shown us that he will not uphold it. Donald Trump thrives on that division and that fear, and we have to overcome that. And there are so many people in this country who want to overcome that. Powerful sentiments there. You could recognize some of those individuals who work with Trump. Really telling when somebody says the worst day that he was exposed for, January 6th, is exactly who he is. And that's coming from someone who spent not only part of their career as a Republican, but as an actual Trump aide, seeing him up close, on stage and off, behind the scenes, all of it. It's a big, big decision that everyone's facing. And a lot of it's going down in Pennsylvania with Obama reemerging tonight.